Here are three easy steps to get hired as a full-time software developer. What's up guys, Clint here with Code Commerce. Welcome to my channel and look, when I was new to coding, when I was just starting out, I didn't know where to start. Honestly, I just kept starting over and over and switching from programming language to programming language. I would follow tutorial after tutorial and I felt completely lost like outside of that tutorial. I felt like I wasn't really learning or retaining any information. Now, if I were to start over today and I only had a limited amount of time before I had to get a job, then these are the three steps I would follow. I'm not saying that this whole process will be easy, but I have broken this down into a basic achievable game plan that's gonna help you get hired as a full-time software developer in the fastest amount of time while avoiding some of the mistakes that I made when I was just starting out. So you already have an idea of what you want to do, but where do you actually start? Okay. You can't afford to go to school, you know, and get a CS degree because maybe you have a full-time job or a family, or maybe it's just simply too expensive. I get it. When I was just learning to code, I fell into all three of those categories. Okay. I had a full-time job. I had a family that I had to support, so I couldn't take off work. And, you know, I couldn't go get a computer science degree. And, you know, now I work as a self-taught developer full-time, okay, and I didn't go to some expensive boot camp. I don't have some, you know, high dollar computer science degree. I had people financially dependent on me. So, you know, those were not options for me and they might not be options for you either. So I'm going to focus on web development, you know, in this video, but really it pertains to any software language. Step number one, follow a tutorial. Okay. Go to Udemy, go, you know, go follow a tutorial. I suggest Colt Steele, Brad Traversy, you know, or Angela Yu. Those are all, you know, great teachers. If you're new to the platform, then you can get like a 40 to 60 hour course for somewhere around 20 bucks, maybe even less. This will be everything you need to know in order to get started in web development. Of course, feel free to follow any of my own tutorials based around web development, a lot of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and JavaScript libraries such as React. But if you want to go to Udemy, you know, that's a great way to get an in-depth, you know, explanation on front-end development or back-end development, depending on your, you know, course of choice. So if you go to Udemy and purchase a course, it's probably going to take around twice as long as the length of the course. What do I mean by this? So whenever I'm watching a tutorial on there, you know, say it's a 40 hour tutorial, it usually takes me, you know, two hours for every one hour of video and sometimes even more. That means that, you know, a course or a tutorial that's 20 hours long will likely take me anywhere from 40 to 60 hours in real life time. So, you know, depending on how much time you have and you know, depending on your own unique situation, you know, it's going to depend on how long it'll take you to complete one of these courses. You know, I'm guessing anywhere from one to three weeks. Okay. So if you don't have that much time, then that's okay. Just put in whatever time you do have. So that was step number one. Now, step number two, okay. Build a project on your own. Okay. So you just finished a tutorial on Udemy. That's awesome. Congratulations. And you may have heard of tutorial hell. If not, that's just a saying amongst developers, which basically means, you know, whenever people are learning to code, they just just follow tutorial after tutorial, you know, once they finish one, they feel like they haven't really learned anything. So they just go buy another tutorial and that's called tutorial hell, but that's not you. That's not what you're going to do. And if you have been doing that, and maybe you're currently experiencing that, then we're going to fix that right now. You're going to act on step two and actually start building a project on your own. Okay. And look, I felt pretty confident following these tutorials, right? Like tutorial after tutorial. Hey, this isn't so bad. Like I'm learning. And then when I went to create my own project and I feel like like I forgot everything that I had just learned. That is okay, okay, that's normal. This is why I suggest, you know, starting on small projects, okay, and just start slowly building on them. Just pick a few small things, you know, with the basics that you just learned, slightly out of your skill level, and just start just start building something. Don't worry, they're gonna be pretty cringy at first. Start off by, you know, building a weather app, okay? Weather apps are great for beginners because you can get used to making API calls and then just, you know, displaying that response in the browser. Build a simple to-do app, okay? You can learn basic CRUD functions functionality, some of the core fundamentals of programming. Six months to a year later from now, you're probably going to look back and think, oh my gosh, that's terrible code. That's okay. You have to start somewhere. Step three, it's time for coding challenges. If you want to get hired as a developer, you're likely going to have to start doing some coding challenges. And you're probably going to have a resume at this point. Hopefully you have a small portfolio of some of the projects you've built. You know, you're going to have a decent understanding of, you know, how web pages are built and how to how to manipulate data on the screen. You are not going to feel comfortable at this point, at least not enough to start applying for jobs. That's okay. Apply anyways. Get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable, okay? Get comfortable with feeling like everyone else knows more than you because I'm telling you the vast vast majority of developers think that, you know, they don't know very much and they think that somebody else knows more than them. That is normal. 
So how do I actually get started with these coding challenges you just talked about and what are they? Coding challenges are little puzzles and algorithm questions to solve by writing code. This is how a lot of employers will filter out potential candidates. Maybe this is a good way to find candidates, maybe not, but the truth is, you know, most employers rely on these coding interview type questions. But the good news is we know the tool they use to weed people out. So all we have to do is just hone in on that skill. I've talked about this a little bit in other videos, but you know, if, if coding challenges are something that's completely new to you, then I would suggest going to a site called eat a bit. Okay. There's a link in the description below. It is an affiliate link. So I do receive a small commission if you sign up, but you know, I think they have a free version as well. And you know, in my experience, this is the best place to start out. If you know, coding challenges are new to you, it's very beginner friendly. Now, once you've solved a handful of these questions and it's time for you to, you know, level up, I would suggest checking out elite code or maybe even algo expert.io algo expert is ran by a guy named Clement and you know, they have some pretty awesome explanations on each problem. A lot of them are in Python, maybe some in JavaScript. I'm not sure, but you know, it, it probably cost about a hundred dollars a year. So well worth the money in my opinion, but if you can't afford it, that's okay. Leak code will do just fine. And guys, a lot of employers actually pull questions directly from these sites. I mean, it's like having the test before you actually have to take the test. That's one of the reasons why I don't feel like, you know, these are the best way to, you know, filter out candidates, but nonetheless, this is what a lot of tech companies do. So now that you can solve, you know, at least some of these questions, you might have to Google, you know, how to do certain things, but you can proficiently solve a handful of these questions. You know, what's next? So you should be able to solve at least a handful of these questions by now. You not, might not know the, you know, the exact syntax. You might have to Google a few things and that's okay, but at least you have an idea of how to solve these problems. Like you might not know the exact code, but you at least know, you know, what to search for. And Hey, if, if you don't know the answer, then instead of Googling, you know, what's the answer for elite code problem number 21 merge two sorted list and just copying the answer, like that's not going to help you try solving it the best as you can first, you know, which is pseudo code, which pseudo code is basically like, you know, not the correct syntax. You would just say like writing out some code. If this do that, you know, store this without knowing the right syntax, get as close as you can before just like, you know, don't just copy an answer. And guys, try and work the question out before just copying the answer. You know, this is how you learn researching and, you know, find, finding out how to work the actual problem will teach you a lot faster than just copying over an answer that you found on Google. But if you really can't solve it, but you, you, you know the steps, try doing something like, you know, just Google how to convert a string into an array. How do I reverse this array? As you keep Googling and looking up specific information and specific questions in that language, it's going to start to stick. And this is far superior to just, you know, Googling what is the answer for elite code question 22. So it may not be the prettiest, most efficient way to solve the problem, but Hey, at least you're starting to solve the problems. And you know, once you solve the problem and you got the right answer, start seeing how other people are solving it. And you know, maybe you can improve on your code the time complexity, the space complexity. Maybe, maybe you can improve on that. So now is the time to start applying for jobs. Okay. Hopefully you have your resume together. You've built some projects. You don't know everything and don't worry. You shouldn't know everything at this point, but you have enough to get hired as a developer in an entry level position. Okay. Get good at solving these coding challenges and get good at, you know, figuring out how to solve these questions and find answers. That's all I have for you guys. Thanks for watching. Smash the like button, share the video, and I'll see you on the next one.